tell you a lot of things about what it means to live in Maine, some of the little quirky things that uh, Maine is all about. But it was a camp meeting I learned one of the most interesting things. Uh, a number of years ago, I don't know if you remember, uh, we had a camp meeting with the Augusta Church on the Augusta Church grounds, and then DS, uh, Reverend Roland Dunlop, his son came and was the camp speaker. Do you remember that? And there were uh, two really powerful messages that he did. Um, but one of the things that I remember most, excuse me, one of the things that I remember the most was, a, was an illustration that he used that I thought was so insightful, I've never forgotten it. And he said this, do you know why when you go to catch crabs, that you never have to put a lid on the bucket. And all over the crowd, do you know why you don't have to put a lid on the bucket? It's because the crabs, as soon as one crab starts to climb out of the bucket, the other crabs down in the bucket grab it and pull it back, back down into the bucket. And you never have to put a lid on a bucket of crabs because they will spend all their time pulling the other crabs down in the bucket with them. Isn't that interesting? The parable that we're looking at this morning is kind of an opposite idea. Not that crabs are grabbing other crabs to keep them in the bucket. But we're but talking about the behavior of fish in the net. This is the last parable that we're looking at in Matthew chapter 13, the parable of the net beginning with verse 47. Once again, so again, Jesus is speaking, and, and Matthew wants us to realize that this is yet another parable about the kingdom of heaven. All of these parables that we've looked at in this chapter 13 of Matthew have all been about the kingdom of heaven. Jesus apparently had a whole book of parables on the kingdom of heaven that he told, and yet again, he's going to tell us another parable about the kingdom of heaven. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on shore, then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad fish away. This is not what will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all of these things, Jesus asked? Yes, they replied. He said to them, therefore, every teacher of the law who has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of the storeroom new treasures as well as old. A couple of things become obvious to us as we as we look at this parable. And that is the tag at the end where he says, therefore, every teacher of the law. Who is he referring to when he talks about the teachers of the law? Well, he's talking about the Pharisees. So this parable, this parable about the net, is about, is, a, is addressed to the Pharisees. And who were the Pharisees? Well, besides being the wealthiest class of the Israelites, they had all of the money. They were also the ones that were the possessors of the knowledge of the law. They were the teachers of the law. And these Pharisees would themselves be teachers, and they would, they would um, gather disciples around themselves. And they would take their knowledge of the law, they would teach their knowledge of the law to their disciples. And sometimes if their disciples were so inclined, they would become teachers themselves and gather around themselves disciples. And this is how the knowledge of the law is passed down from one generation to another. And here we see Jesus gathering around himself his own disciples. And he is teaching them 
and some of his disciples are themselves Pharisees. And he is teaching them about the kingdom of heaven. So this parable will cause these Pharisees, these ones who have grown up generation after generation after generation, learning the law, teaching the law, passing on the interpretation, the accepted interpretation of the law down from one generation to another. These disciples, these Pharisees that are following Jesus, have the opportunity to learn Jesus' teachings and add it to what they already know. So as a result of being able to understand Jesus' teachings about the kingdom of heaven, that he is teaching them through parables, they are going to have old treasures, which are the law of Moses and the prophecies the prophecies about the kingdom. These Pharisees are going to be able to have both the prophecies of the kingdom and the fulfillment of the kingdom. Those of us who have come after, who have only these Gospels, really only get the fulfillment of the kingdom. And we have these teachings. And so Jesus is taking these parables and he is showing how the prophecies of the kingdom are fulfilled and the parables show how these prophecies have been fulfilled. So now as we have all of this understanding of who Jesus is addressing in this parable, he is addressing the Pharisees. And Pharisees have traditionally been in the Christian church applied to you and me. Those of us who have grown up in the church, I, for one, was dedicated in this church when I was six weeks old. I would be considered a Pharisee. Many of you who were brought to church as babies, maybe this church, maybe another church, who grew up hearing these teachings, we would be the Pharisees. So this parable that we're looking at, this is for you. This is for me. This parable about the fish. And so Jesus tells this parable, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake. Now that struck me, of course, because around here we don't let nets down into the lake. We get smelts and minnows and that sort of thing if, we, if they stay in the net. Around here, we take nets and we take them out into the ocean. And we catch fish up there. But in this parable, they are letting their nets down into the lake. The largest freshwater lake in the world is the Sea of Galilee. They let their nets down into the lake and they caught all kinds of fish. So again, in this fifth, sixth parable that Jesus is telling about the kingdom of heaven, we see, right at the beginning of this parable, that the kingdom of heaven is for the entire world. Not just for Israel, not for just for the Jews, it is for everyone. We are fishing the entire lake, not one spot. We're setting up the nets and we are dragging the lake. And whatever gets caught up in the net gets caught up in the net. And then the fishermen take the nets out of the lake, pull it up on shore, and sort the fish. And, it, and when, you, when we read that, we said there were good fish and there were bad fish. Do you know what that is talking about? Yes. You do? It is talking about the fish that are kosher, that comply with the law of Moses. The law of Moses specifies that there are only certain fish that a good Jew may eat. And then there are bad fish, the unclean fish, the fish that a good Jew is not allowed to eat. And the clean fish are prophetic, symbolic of the righteous. 
and the bad fish are prophetic, symbolic of the wicked fish. Clean fish are righteous fish. Unclean fish are wicked fish. Are fish righteous and wicked? Not beauty. So we have this symbol where the fish represents. Now, when are the fish sorted out? When do we start pulling the wicked fish out of the net? Not while it's still in the lake. And that's what we're focusing on this morning. I gave you that story about the crabs and how the crabs pull one another down into the bucket. This is, a, is an illustration of what fish do not do. Fish do not kick out of the net all the bad fish while they're being fished. The sorting between the good fish, the righteous people, and the bad fish, the wicked people, does not happen while the fishing is taking place. There are no fishermen jumping into the lake trying to keep all the bad fish from being caught. And the fish certainly do not throw out wicked fish while they are in the water. There's that scene from Finding Nemo that comes to my mind of all of those fish that are all being, that are all being captured in this net. And you have all of these fish, and then Marlin, or Nemo, Nemo's in there, and he's saying, swim down, swim down, and all of the fish swim down, working together to swim down. But this isn't taking place here. That only happens in Disney movies. In the real world, when real fishermen go real fishing with real nets in the real ocean or lake, you catch everything. You catch fish, you catch crabs, you catch plastic rings that go on the six pack of your beer. All of that is in the net. And none of it is sorted until the net is pulled in. Here's a lesson for us. We are not in the business as a church of kicking out bad fish. It's not our place. These doors are open to anyone who will come here. Our fellowship is open to anyone who will join us. We accept everyone in the net. Understand, accept does not mean that we approve or disapprove of how anybody lives. Acceptance is a form of forgiveness. And when we talked about the, the wheat and the weeds, we remember that the farmer said, let it be. Do not pull up the weeds now, or you may pull up some good wheat. Let it be, which is the same root word that, that is translated forgive. Forgive the weeds for growing among the wheat. Forgive the bad fish for being in the net. Let it be. It is not our job to sort the fish. It is our job to be captured and to participate in capturing anything that will be caught up in the net. Let it be. Let the fish be that are in the net that maybe we look around and we say, hey, you know what? You're not like me. I bet you're a wicked fish. Not our job. Not our job. That is, at the end of the age, we are told when that sorting is going to take place. There will be judgment. It bothers me how many Christians cheer and look forward to that judgment. That bothers me a lot. 
we should have our hearts broken that there are so many wicked fish in the net. We should have our hearts broken that the net will be pulled from the lake before we have captured enough good fish. This should break our hearts. But instead, we are anxious to judge. And remember, this is a parable for the Pharisees. And what are they famous for? They're famous for judging. They're famous for their rulers going around making sure everybody measures up. They're the fish in the water with little rulers going around measuring to see whether or not that fish is long enough to be captured. And the message that Jesus had for those Pharisees was, at the end of the age, the fishermen will sort. It is not the place of the fish. We're going to come and gather around and we're going to receive communion together. And I'll tell you, quite frankly, that as we gather here at this table, there is no way that we can look to our left and to our right and say, that person is not worthy for this communion. That's not our place. Communion is a means of grace. It is a way for the spirit of Jesus Christ to come into each one of our hearts that little moment of grace where we can experience Christ and His love and His sacrifice. That He died for all the fish in that ocean, the good ones and the wicked ones. And for right now, today, in this moment, all the fish are in the net. All the fish are at the table. And we will share this communion together. Pastor Ben, would you come and help me serve? Lord Jesus, in these final moments of this service, we have gathered around this table. We have taken the bread. We have drunk of the cup. But even as we drink of the cup of the new covenant, many of us have yet to drink from the cup of sorrow that you offer to share in your suffering. The suffering that you suffered not only for not us, the good fish, but also the bad fish. Break our hearts, Lord. Give us a heart for those who are lost. Give us a heart for those who are oppressed by our own actions. We pray, Lord, as we journey forward as a church, that you will allow us to capture the vision for the work that you are doing here. We pray, Lord, that it will become a part of us. It will be the breath we breathe to reach out to those who are not here today, who are outside of our fellowship, and to welcome them as they are, knowing that it is not your will that they stay with them. Partner with us. Show us, invite us to work where you are working. And we ask this in Jesus.